Let's move on to main topic number two. And our second main topic today gets sent in to us by Lindsay Mestra, who writes, Hi, John. As we enter the age of the streaming wars, one of the major players still to come is HBO Max. I read about a new show I'm really excited about called Minx, set in the 1970s about the first women's erotic magazine. Does this tell us HBO will both try to focus some programming on shows that will be targeted at women and also skew more adult Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that that in, Lindsay. And yes, there is this new show coming. The first thing I want to say is start doing adult programming. <laughs> right. Because yeah. HBO has always been linked with, uh, you know, ABC Family. Yeah. Like very, very family is friendly. Is only watching Sesame Street on HBO? <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, it, about, you know, this is back to when HBO was showing Fraggle Rock. There you go. Because remember, I yep. didn't have HBO because I had a tortured childhood yeah. and therefore... <laughs> Um, you know, my, my parents would not get HBO. You so didn't I was get the to only, go down to Fraggle Rock. I was the only kid in school that didn't know the theme song. <gasps> That's okay. Dance your cares away. Anyway. Worries for another day. I've always wanted to be a, I Aaron. wanted to be a dozer. Anyway, I don't know what that is. Um, so yes, uh, yeah, they've they first of all, HBO has a, a number of programs targeted both at women and the adult audience and all that kind of stuff. This is actually very much in line uh, with their kind of programming and stuff like this. So anyway, this is this is the write up on it. It says, uh, written by Rappaport, uh, the half hour Minx is set in the 1970s Los Angeles and centers around an earnest young feminist who joins forces with a low rent publisher to create the first erotic magazine for women this sounds a little bit to me what's the james franco show the deuce the deuce this, this sounds to me a little reminiscent of the deuce in many ways which is totally good and look you're right the streaming wars are upon us uh you know the clone wars are here the streaming wars are upon us hbo max is going to be a major player in all this it's still not it we still don't really have a clear picture about what HBO Max is really going to be. How does all the other streaming stuff that HBO is currently involved with going to come into this? What's the DC streaming service going to look like once this thing really goes full throttle? A lot of question marks. I'll tell you what, though. Both The Deuce and this show sound really interesting to me and, and kind of far out there. Aaron, you heard about this show coming. What do you think about it? And do you think it's something that people should be enthused about? I'm enthused. I am definitely the target demographic for this show. <laughs> I, I read this. I was like, yes, let's talk about this. Here, okay, there's so many things that I have to say. So, John, you just cut me off when you need to. <laughs> um, what's very exciting about this show, and remember, not too long ago, I talked about target demographic. Yeah. So anyone who's watching who's like, this show sounds terrible. This is just a bunch of feminist crazy nonsense. Think about it. Maybe this is not your target demographic show. However, I will say this. I'm glad that you brought up The Deuce because when I was reading about this, my Im immediate comparisons were The Deuce and um, Gr Good Girls Revolt, which mm, was a right. short-lived oh, yeah. show. One season, right? It had one season, but here's here was the crazy thing. So uh, Dana Calvo, who was the creator and showrunner of Good Girls Revolt, um, she was a showrunner of a series that I did and ha was very vocal about what was going on. And the network that it was on, uh, the guy who was in charge of the network later was fired for multiple sexual harassment issues. And then he even admitted that he never watched a single episode of Good Girls Revolt before he took it off the air. Wow. And it was a, it was a whole thing. And this really and this really reminded me of that because it was about uh, when women were first starting to work for newspapers and starting to have their voices heard and the issues that they were running up against. So when you combine the journalistic aspect of Good Girls Revolt with the eroticism and the sexuality and the craziness that was going on in 1970s Manhattan of the deuce, I feel like this is a perfect combination of those two. And actually, they're not saying it, but this show is totally based on the actual first female erotica magazine called Viva, which came out in the early 70s, because you have Bob Guccione, I believe is how you pronounce it. He was the founder of Penthouse. He started Penthouse in the UK to go up against Playboy, which was started obviously by Hugh Hefner in the early 1950s. So Penthouse was the first magazine to show like full frontal women's like first magazine to show pubic hair. I mean, it was 
totally revolutionary. Mental note, when I need a porn history lesson, <laughs> come to I me. Know I know. To I was going to say, you want anything about Batman the Animated Series? Hi. <laughs> Aaron's crushing it with her porn knowledge. And so he, so, so Bob said, hey, I want to create something similar for women. I mean, the, the second wave feminist movement was really starting. Um, women were legally allowed to take birth control pills, even if they weren't married. <gasps> Shock of all shocks. You know, women were really starting to own their own sexuality. And so for the first time, you had this magazine that not only was showing male nudity, but it wasn't it wasn't shown in the same way. You know, I've talked before about the the male gaze versus the female gaze. In magazines like Penthouse, it was like naked women showing all their stuff. And this was like men that were naked and they were leading a horse through the woods. <laughs> you know, you know, men that were naked and they were having a lovely picnic and it was soft lighting. And it wasn't necessarily like, here's a dong, ladies, look at it. It was it was a, a little bit different because it was for a different audience. But additionally, they had writers like Jane Fonda and Maya Angelou and Paul and Linda McCartney. They had um, Art Kane as art directors and a very young Anna Wintour doing the fashion segment before she became the ultimate, the penultimate fashion goddess who now runs Vogue and has started an, an, an empire. This show has so much potential. And if you just read up on the history of Viva magazine, um, it was short lived. It was five years. And I think partly because it didn't really know how to find its audience. Another big conflict is going to be between Bob, the smutty guy who was in charge of everything, and his life partner and working partner, Kathy Keenan, who actually was the publisher but wanted to have more of a feminist slant, wanted to bring in all these really brilliant writers, men and women, and allow for there to be articles about these Vietnam War families, about, you know, stories about rape, stories about the IUD and birth control, and all these stories that were really hard hitting, but from a female point of view that women didn't have access to otherwise. And I think it's also a really interesting case study in pornography versus eroticism. And what actually women are interested in and intrigued by. So I cannot, and also to see how the feminists of the time were even against this magazine itself mm. and how the women who were themselves were relating to being feminist were having to go up against other feminists who were like, this is pornography, take it down. I just think that there's so many ways that they can go with this and I cannot say how enough how excited I am. I think that if this is done well, which I really hope it is, this is going to be a great show. Totally target demographic. <laughs> Chris, you've heard about this. You're reading up on this. Please give us your historical perspective on <laughs> oh, this. Oh, man. Well, welcome to my TED Talk. No, honestly, the first thing I thought when I read about this story was, oh, my God, this is such an Aaron show. Aaron's yeah. going to produce this. Aaron's going to write for it. Aaron's going to star in it. Um, oh, my gosh. I feel like I've watched the show now, and I'm very intrigued based on the history lesson I just got. And honestly, I do hope that it is a platform that allows intersectional feminism to be explored, because if you're going to be a feminist, you have to support sex work. Workers and you have to support everyone. That's yeah. what feminism is, not bringing people down, putting everyone at the same table. So I'm excited about that. And it sounds very interesting. And yeah, this seems so HBO, still baffled mm -hmm. by adult programming questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Very I'm hyped HBO. For this. Very HBO. All right, guys. The question is, what do you think about the sounds of this show? Maybe you're somebody who watched a deuce and you're like, oh yeah, this sounds right up my alley. Maybe you never saw that show and this sounds kind of weird and foreign. How do you feel about it? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right.